Good morning, everyone. Pastor Lon here. Hope everybody's having a good morning thus far, and I hope you have a great day. I want to share a little bit of God's Word with you on devotion time on the island this morning. I'm going to be reading out of Matthew's writing, Matthew chapter 14, uh, verses 27 through 31. The title of this little devotion this morning is, Don't Let Your Feelings Hinder Your Faith. Don't Let Your Feelings Hinder Your Faith. It says in, in uh, Matthew's writing in verse 27 of chapter 14, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Keep that in mind. Peter actually walked on the water for a few steps. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now, like I said, the title is Don't Let Your Feelings Hinder Your Faith. That's exactly what the disciples did this night on the sea. You know, it's right after he fed the 5,000 and he gathered the, uh, gathered the disciples together, put them on the ship, sent over to the other side while he went up in the mountain to pray. And when he was there alone, and then when he came to them, the, wind, the little ship was already in the midst of the storm. And your ship may be in the midst of the storm today as well. But I want to look at a few uh, points in this in this little story that may help us and maybe make us question ourselves. Um, number one, Jesus spake unto them as they were fearful. And he come to them and said, It is I, be of good cheer. It is I, you know, you let them know who he was. He spoke to them during their fearful time. Number two, Peter answered back. So, Lord, if it be thou, if it's you, bid me to come to you on the water. Number three, Jesus called unto him, Come. Let him know it was him to come to him. Peter walked on the water. As a fleshly man, Peter took a few steps on the water. And I'm a firm believer, and you may disagree with me, but I'm a firm believer that had he not looked at the wind, had he not looked at the circumstances and went on his fearful feelings, Peter could have walked all the way to Jesus that night on the water. I believe that with all this within me. See, if you don't believe the story that he walked on the water, it said he began to walk on the water, but then he got looking at his circumstances. And ultimately what that's teaching us is he took his eyes off of Jesus. He got he, he wasn't focused on Jesus. He got distracted by everything that was going on around him. Doesn't that sound familiar in the world we're living in today? Many people have gotten distracted and not following Christ like they should or like they used to be because they're too distracted about the boisterous winds of the of the things that have been going on for the last two and a half years, going on three years, for the things that's going on with our, our Ukraine now and the food shortages and the oppression from the enemy. There's so much darkness in the land and we've, lo we've lo lost our focus, some of us have, on who Jesus really is. And that's what happened to Peter that night. But then uh, Peter began, as I said, Peter be uh, became fearful and distracted and I got ahead of myself and began to sink. Well, when he began to sink, he cried out in fear again to Jesus. And immediately it said Jesus reached down or stretched forth his hand and called him. But the first thing he asked him, and you know, it's just me in my mind. I don't know exactly. It doesn't really say how it happened. But it said he caught him by the hand. It didn't say a thing in the world that he pulled him up immediately. It just said he caught him by the hand. Matter of fact, I'll read it to you again. It said, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And said unto him, he called him by the hand and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? That's got a question mark behind it, behind those red letters in the in the King James Version Bible that I'm reading from today. It's a question mark. He asked him, Wherefore didst thou doubt? Why did you doubt me? And I'm wondering if he didn't just hold him right there. Even though he had him by the hand, I wonder if he was knee deep or waist deep or even deeper as he was sinking. And Jesus asked him, said, Where is your faith? Why did you doubt me? And then he pulled him on up to the surface. The Bible doesn't say that clearly. I'm just thinking in my mind, but it says he caught him. And immediately, right, he asked him right away, where is your faith? Why did you doubt me? You can think of that however you want to. And then he pulled him back up to the surface, I believe. And then they went back in the ship and the wind ceased. So with all that being said, I ask you a few questions this morning. So what feelings are hindering your faith? 
What's keeping you from having a faith in God that he can do any and everything in your life or you can accomplish any and everything in your life that you set out to do if you put Christ first in your life? Another question is, so what circumstances are hindering your praise? Matter of fact, the circumstances in our lives, our life, I'm talking to myself as well, should not hinder our praise and worship to God. He's always God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So our circumstances shouldn't determine our praise and worship. We're all human. We live in a fleshly body. I got that. You know, I, I spoke the other last devotion about real forgiveness. And, um, you know, there are a lot of holier-than-thou people on here, and they say, well, if, if you don't forget it, you haven't really forgiven. I don't. I disagree with that. I've been forgiven of my sin, but I still can remember some of the sins that I, I, I partook of when I was a sinner. And, you know, you can't help but to remember some things because the devil will try to bring them up to you and open. You don't have to act upon them, but there's there's times in your life that you're going to, I mean, you, you can't hardly help but to remember some of these things. I want to make that clear to make, I don't want anybody to think I was trying to be holier than thou, that, oh, yeah, I forgave and forgotten and everything. I forgave the person, the people that done me wrong, but you can't help but to remember some of those things. And uh, I think as long as you don't act upon them and let it dra drag you back into where you once were, you continue to love them, pray, and God will help that get further and further away from your mind. But we're still living in the flesh of the body. That's why he says we have to crucify this old flesh daily because the flesh is weak, even though the spirit is willing. And that's what we've seen happen here uh, with Peter. Uh, he began to get uh, fearful. He got distracted, and he allowed the, the, his feelings and the circumstances to determine his praise and worship and ultimately his faith in Jesus Christ. So I'll ask you a few questions in closing. Maybe, maybe your some of the feelings you have is feelings of hopelessness. We're living in a time today where it seems like there's just no hope in the world anymore. But if we'll get back to focusing on the Word of God, there's hope in Jesus. There's so many promises in this blessed book. We need to refocus our mind and not allow the devil to take us down a dark path. Feeling fearful. There's a lot of people that are feeling fearful today with all the things that are going on. But if we count, if we, if we read God's word, he tells us that perilous times would come. He tells us that we should count it all joy. It's a positive, if we should count it all joy, we fall into divers and many temptations. And when you're going through affliction, when we're going through trial, I try to say we. I'm in this with you. I'm not above anybody. And you're not above me. None of us are above reproach. But we have got to put Christ at the center of our life. And he'll help us not to be feel hopelessness and fearfulness in our life. Anxious. There are a lot of anxious people. They don't know what's going to happen next. They, their nerves are wrecked or a mess. And um, they need to, we need to refocus on spending more time in prayer, spending more time in the Word of God, and he'll help us with our feelings. Helplessness as well as feeling troubled in our spirit. You know, that's what the devil wants us to do, y'all, for the last long as he's trying to separate us. And I got another devotion coming up that I've been working on, hopefully come out later this week as well. But I won't get into that. But one thing I do want to say to send that the devil tries to drive a wedge in between us and God. He don't want you to be happy. He don't want you to be joyful. And that's in the next devotion that I got coming up. But I just wanted to mainly get on here this morning and just talk about the fact that, you know, don't let your feelings uh, determine or dictate your faith or control your faith because we got to remember, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He died that we could be made free from the bondage of sin. And you need to continue to walk hand in hand with the master and let the devil know he's a liar and the father of every lie he's ever told you. And Jesus Christ will be there with you. But I just thought it was ironic. They just watched him perform the miracle of feeding the 5,000. Here he comes on the water. They didn't recognize who he was. He cried out to them, called out to them, let them know, be of good cheer. And then Peter still wanted to know, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come into you. And he told him to come. He started walking on the water. You know, and everybody's got their own opinion about that. I mean, if I walked on the water for two or three steps, one side of me says I, I would have had the faith and the confidence to keep on walking. Then maybe the other side of me said, man, what in the world's happening? I would start looking around maybe like Peter did and begin to sink. But in, nevertheless, many of us have, have been following Christ and on fire for the Lord and and uh, things would come along in our life and kind of snatch the rug out from under us. And the main reason the devil's able to do that is because we take our focus off of Christ. We continue to walk with him. He never said you wouldn't have to go through trials and tribulations, but he did say you wouldn't have to go through it alone. So 
I love and appreciate you. I hope this little devotion helped you today. But remember the title. Don't let your feelings hinder your faith. And don't let your circumstances um, dictate your praise and your worship to Almighty God. Praise Him in the valley. And before you know it, we'll be back on the mountaintop. Amen. With Jesus Christ, which He's in the valley with us as well. See, a lot of people think when they see people walking through the valley, those people have done something wrong and they've, they've sinned against God, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it wasn't the case with Job. He was in a bad spot and we lost everything he owned in one day. But he kept the faith. He kept his eyes on God Almighty and God brought him through and multiplied his possessions with many, many, with much more than he had in the beginning. So I love and appreciate you. May God richly bless you. Remember, we're all in this together. There's no big guys and little yous here. The only, only one that's in, in control is God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. So I love you and I appreciate you. May God richly bless you the rest of this day. Leave your comments below on what you thought about this devotion. Leave your prayer requests below, and I'll be sure to pray for them. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you again for this day. I thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus that you sent to die on the cross for my sins as well as the whole world. And I pray, God, that we wouldn't allow our feelings to hinder our faith, that we wouldn't allow the circumstances around us to dictate or determine when and how we praise and worship you. Let us praise you in the good times as well as the bad times. Let us praise you when it's light outside as well as when it's dark. And I'm speaking and preaching to myself. We all get down and out. Ministers are not exempt. Our feelings overwhelm us sometimes. But if we don't crucify this flesh daily, we'll slowly drift away from you. We'll drift away from reading your word. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that you just allow us to Spend some, mid, spend some time in, in prayer in the midnight hour all alone. If you had to get alone, how much more should we need to get alone, spend time with you, to recharge our spiritual batteries, so to speak. So, Father, I pray that this message will go out and help somebody today that's got their, their feelings of trying to uh, put a damper on their faith. I pray that they wouldn't do like Peter, look at the wind, but they would keep their eyes on you. And realize that you're going to take them straight to the promised land. They continue to follow in your footsteps. Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. For that, that name above every name. The name of Jesus. I ask all these blessings upon all my subscribers and all those that watch this video. I pray, God, you bless them before me and bless them beyond measure. Save the lost. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love and appreciate you. May God reach and bless you the rest of this day. And until next time, remember, Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is the answer for any and everything we're dealing with in life. Hope you all have a wonderful day.